Now, on to the notion of clothes. These little guys right here. And the weaver said, speak to us of clothes. And he answered, your clothes conceal much of your beauty, yet they hide not the unbeautiful. And though you seek in garments the freedom of privacy, you may find in them a harness and a chain. Would that you could meet the sun and the wind with more of your skin and less of your raiment, for the breath of life is in the sunlight and the hand of life in the wind. Some of you say, it is in the north wind who has woven the clothes we wear. And I say, aye, it was the north wind. But shame was his loom, and the softening of sinews was his thread. And when his work was done, he laughed in the forest. Forget not that modesty is for a shield against the eye of the unclean. And when the unclean shall be no more, what was modesty but a fetter and a fouling of the mind? And forget not that earth delights to feel you bare your feet, and the winds long to play with your hair. That's a really short one. That's a one-pager right there. All that we read is just that right there. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go, chat. That's all we just read. One page. So, our buddy Gilbron wanted to be a nudist, apparently. No, I'm just kidding. Um, there's a couple things that I want to draw your attention to in this passage. First of which is that your clothes conceal much of your beauty, that they do not hide the unbeautiful. So, if you're a total butthole, no clothes are going to make you not be a butthole. In fact, if you're really well dressed and then you're a butthole, that makes you like a bigger butthole because if you're well dressed and well refined, it's expected that you have manners and that you treat people right, things like that. So it's like a butthole amplifier, if that makes sense. But getting back to it, this is getting into like a crazy literary review. Um, and the other thing is that I think Gilbron's very much a naturalist. He likes the natural order of things. He likes nature and things like that. And he says, and when, and forget not that the earth delights to fill your bare feet and the wind longs to play with your hair. So again, go outside, but don't like cover your body too, too much that you miss out on the experience of life, that you don't feel the sun radiating down on you and giving you warmth and all those things. So don't let clothing be a barrier to your experience in that way. And then finally, the last theme that I want to draw your attention to here is the notion of modesty. Excuse me. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Forget not that modesty is a shield against the eye of the unclean. And when the unclean shall be no more, what was modesty but a fetter and fouling of the mind? So there are people who look creepily on scantily clad men and women. I won't say much more about it, but yeah, modesty is important, but the bigger problem is that people look unscrupulously now granted like don't go out dressed half naked or don't like wear conservative clothing like within the ramifications of what's societally acceptable but at the same time it's like i worry a lot about i think a lot about the like, kids that i do youth ministry for i'm a youth minister at my church by the way and so i think a lot about the world that I'm sending these kids out into and what I'm preparing them for and how there may be some eyes that are looking at them rather unscrupulously. And maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but I think that's what Gilbron is saying here. The problem is not modesty. The problem is that there are people that look creepily at people who aren't dressed modestly. And thusly, modesty is a futile exercise in trying to abate that versus just trying to fix the problem of people looking creepily at people other people i should say and that's all i'm going to say about that 